Welcome back to the solution of exercise number 5 of problem sheet number 3. This is just the same exercise as number 4, but uh, the only difference is that we investigate continuous groups. We investigate uh, the function space of periodic functions with a parameter phi. This is nothing else than the C infinity group. And we solve the eigenvalue problem according to a derivative to that uh, parameter. So you, when you look back at exercise number four, you recognize that the first thing we do is construct a character table of C infinity. We have that one parameter alpha and transferring our knowledge from exercise number four to this exercise yields for the representation gamma m an acquired phase of e to the i m alpha. m is of course in the whole numbers and m equals zero gives the identity representation. In part b we want to define how operators acting on this function space transform the different functions. So we want to define a rotation operator O alpha acting on a function f of phi. You might recognize this expression from exercise number two. In exercise number two we define it on E3. Here we want to transfer that to polar coordinates. So what happens if we transfer that? Well, it's easy, you can guess what happens. The angle alpha is just inserted in the argument. That this is indeed a good representation, you can check easily. You act with two different rotations on a function and what happens? Well, you subtract first one angle and then you subtract the other angle and that's just the same as subtracting both angles. This is only valid because we have periodicity. In part 3 we want to project out our basis functions. We take a, a f of phi as a trial vector and we project according to the gamma mth representation. We discussed the projected technique in exercise number 3 and you can read out the definition there. A little more slower because here we have a continuous group we can investigate the expression. So the one is because we have the dimension of one in the gamma m representation. Then we want to define the average. The average is not the same as with uh, uh, discrete groups. Here we want to do an integral. We integrate over all possible angles and divide by the number of possibilities. This is the thing transferred to our continuous groups. Then we take the complex conjugate of our character, this is e uh, to the minus i m alpha, and then we act with a rotation O alpha on our trial function f of phi. So we end up with f of phi minus alpha. Now it's good to keep in mind what do you, what do you wanna have? What do we wanna end up with? You wanna end up with a function dependent, dependent on phi. So it's it should be useful to perform a variable substitution and take out our e to the i m phi and end up with an integral 0 to 2 pi d alpha f of alpha e to the i m alpha. This is nothing else than a number dependent on m. m again is the, the label of our representation and our projected basis function is proportional to e to the i m phi. Here in part d we want to solve our eigenvalue problem. But before we write down our eigenvalue equation we check that m commutes indeed with c infinity right here. To do that we perform a similarity transform or of our vector m according to the symmetry group right here and the symmetry group is defined by O alpha. So we do that and see what happens if we apply that on a function f of phi and this is just the same approach as in exercise 2b. You will immediately recognize the similarities. Here we want to do the chain rule because we want to end up with the phi in only one spot namely here. Now we act with O alpha on this part, so we end up minus i d by dx f of x 
evaluated at phi and this is nothing else than d by d phi f of phi. So our vector m is indeed left invariant under the symmetry group of our problem. Now we can write down the eigenvalue equation. We have minus i d by d phi a of m, which is our constant right here, times our basis function i m phi. Now what happens? We derive by phi, this is a simple calculation, we end up with minus m a of m e to the minus i m phi. This is our eigenvector, this is our eigenvalue and this is our operator m. E m times v of m times v of m. So our energies are described, are labeled by the representation and are minus, these are minus m. m, I will remind you again, is in the whole numbers. Thank you for watching. I hope the information density was high enough. Uh, if I left anything out, please write me an email. See you next time.